Good morning. I welcome you all to this session of fluid mechanics. And last class, we were discussing about the stability of floating bodies and we ultimately came to the conclusion that if the meta center is above the center of gravity, then a floating body is in stable equilibrium. If the meta center coincides with the center of gravity, it is in neutral equilibrium. And if the meta center is below the center of gravity, the floating body is unstable equilibrium. This we discussed. Now, we see that also uh, we uh, recognized or we derived an equation uh, representing the metacentric height in terms of the dimension of the body that is the geometrical shape of the body and its dimensions. And we, if we recall the equation is like that the distance between the center of buoyancy to the meta center along the old vertical line containing the center of buoyancy, center of gravity and the meta center is equals to the moment of area of the plane of flotation about an axis perpendicular to the plane of flotation divided by the immersed volume. Now, we just see one interesting thing that when let us consider a floating body, let us consider a ship, let us consider a ship like this, a floating. Now, we see that if this is the meta center is stable condition, if this is the center of gravity and this is the center of buoyancy, this is under stable condition. That means, under a tilted condition, under a tilted displaced condition, the ship looks like this, ship looks like this and we have recognized one thing that this is M, this is the new B center of buoyancy B dash and this is the G through which the vertical force W acting through which A B. Now, we see in this case, the restoring moment which acts in this direction opposite to the direction of tilt is equal to this distance into W or A B. Let us call W and this distance can be written for small angle theta G M sin theta. This is the restoring moment. Now, if I equate this with the moment of inertia and the angular acceleration from the conservation of angular momentum theorem of conservation of angular momentum, we can write this is equal to the moment of inertia of this body, mass moment of inertia of this body about the plane of or the axis of rotation, axis of rotation times into d square theta d t square, where this is the angular acceleration. That means, theta is the angle of hill at any time instantaneous angular hill at any time t with a negative sign, because this is a retarding one because this a couple is the restoring couple. So, therefore, the roll is reducing. That means, if we consider the rolling of the ship, we can write the equation for the angular position with respect to time by this considering the theorem of conservation of angular momentum. For small angle theta, sin theta can be replaced as theta and it if I write this, this equation is ultimately transferred to d theta d square theta d square plus okay, w into g m, g m is the metacentric height divided by i into theta is 0. So, therefore, we see that we have a simple harmonic motion for the angular displacement that means for the rolling of the ship, a simple harmonic motion whose time period t can be written as twice pi times under root of 1 by this that means under root of i divided by w into g m. This you know from your simple mathematics. So, this is the time period of roll. So, one very interesting thing comes out from this that time period of roll is inversely proportional to the metacentric height. That means, if we make the metacentric height big that means, give a better chance of stability then the time period will be very small and time period very small means rolling will be fast which can cause discomfort to the passengers. So, in ships carrying passengers, sometimes the metacentric height is made relatively low at little sacrifice of the stability to increase the period of, uh, so, uh, to increase the peri time period. That means, for better comfort, the time period is increased. But in what ships, it is other way. The metacentric height is made as large as possible to have a much better chance of stability, whereas the time period of roll becomes very 
if this is very high, so this is very small. So, time period of roll becomes very small. So, comfort is sacrificed at the cost of stability, but for ships carrying passengers sometimes the comfort is not sacrificed that much with the respect of stability, because stability is also first primary thing is the stability, but what allowance we should give for GM, if you make GM very high with a greater factor of safety, sometimes it affects T causing the uncomfort to the passengers. So, this is the key equation for the rolling. Okay, that is all uh, regarding uh, this metacentric height problem, but few things I must tell you at this moment before concluding this buoyancy thing. One thing you must know that for a floating body, even if G is above the center of buoyancy, it is stable. Why? Center of buoyancy gets a chance to shift in the direction of the tilt. So, when center of buoyancy shifts direction of the tilt because of the changing in the immersed volume, not total volume is distribution, that stability is improved. Similarly, if the gravity also tries to change in the direction of the tilt, it will give an adverse effect of the stability that you can very well understand. So, therefore, the gravity, the center of gravity is not allowed to change in the direction of the tilt. So, this may happen in a case when some cargo may move in the ship or sometimes it happens if the floating body contains inside a liquid. So, when it is given a tilt, the free surface of the liquid will be horizontal. So, some liquid volume will be moving towards the tilt. So, therefore, the center of mass will be shifted towards the tilt. So, that will give an adverse effect to the stability. So, therefore, the, if the floating bodies contain liquid, these are separated into a number of large compartments, large number of compartments, large sorry, large number of compartments, so that the free surface almost remains the same. There is a little change in the distribution of mass. And if there are some solid particles which wants to move, for example, small cargoes in a big ship that are being prevented, so that gravity, center of gravity is not allowed to move in the direction of the tilt. Well, now after this, I will just solve few examples. Let us see which is very important. First is example 1. And an inclined tube manometer, let us see the example 1. An inclined tube manometer as shown in figure, I will show the figure afterwards, read 0. An inclined tube manometer as shown in figure reads 0 when A and B are at the same pressure. This A and B that requires the figure. So, that is why figure some A and B, you just recall it. When I had the same pressure an inclined tube manometer shown as shown in figure reads 0. The reservoir diameter is 50 millimeter as you know an inclined tube manometer has a big reservoir and a small tube and that of inclined tube which is inclined 5 millimeter which is very small compared to the reservoir. For theta is equal to 30 degree and gauge fluid with S is equal to 0 0.332 that is the specific gravity S is specific gravity of the fluid. Find P A minus P B that is the pressure at A and pressure at B, the difference of this as a function of reading R, R is the reading that I will show in the figure. How much will the error be if the deflection of the liquid level in the reservoir were neglected? So, this is all right. Again, I am reading an inclined tube manometer as shown in figure read 0 when A and B are at the same pressure. The reservoir diameter is 50 millimeter and that of inclined tube 5 millimeter, that is the inclined tube. For theta is equal to 30 degree and gauge fluid with S 0 0.332, that means the gauge fluid whose specific gravity is 0.332. Find the difference of pressure between A and B, that is P A minus P B as a function of reading R, that is the manometer reading. How much will the error be if the deflection of the liquid level in the reservoir when neglected? So, the advantage of liquid level reservoir to be neglected is that we can make the reservoir as I have told earlier not of transparent material which may be costly. So, only we can make the inclined tube transparent. So, this problem is well understood. Now, with this problem let us see what exactly the problem tells. Okay. Let us draw this is the this is the inclined tube okay and this is the system a let this is the point a where the pressure is exerted p 
and let this is the point B where the pressure is exerted P B. That means, A and B these two open ends of these two sides, one is the reservoir, another is the short limb are connected to two systems whose pressure P A and P B. Well, let us consider the initial level of the liquid B here. Let us consider the initial level of the liquid when there was no pressure A and B, P A and P B equal that is initial. That means, initial level means if the manometric, this is the manometric full of manometric liquid, then this will be at the same level. That means, that is a, it is written in the problem you see that when A and B are at the same pressure, that means, the system pressures are same and they are not connected to A and B which are varying in pressure either way you can understand. The reading figure reads 0, that means inclined tube manometer reads 0, that means here the reading is 0, this we measure like this. Now, what happens when this pressure is applied, when A and B it is applied to that when P A is greater than P B, then what happens? This limb will be decreased and here this will be increased, that means the manometric fluid that means, this is the manometric fluid. So, this reading we tell it as R, which is graduated along this tube. This reading we tell it as R, this is the reading. Now, we have to find out P A minus P B as a function of R, which is very simple now. What we have to do? We have to find out this is the label, now this is the so, we are finding out the pressure at this point. So, let us consider the hydrostatic equation we are writing at this level from both these sides. Let us consider this deflection as y and this is definitely, so this one is definitely if this be the theta, this is r sin theta. So, actually truly speaking, we will have to use the hydrostatic equation at this level of the liquid. So, original level of the liquid is not very important. Now, we have to find out the difference in level in both the limbs like a simple U tube manometer. From this side, what is this? P A is equal to, now here the height we are not considering, consider a system compressible fluid gas which gives the pressure straight to this P A because you know the height of the fluid in case of a gas whose density is low is neglected. So, it is not a liquid straight a system pressure which may be air is just impressed on this surface. So, it is simply P A which is equated from this side P B plus this height plus this height of the manometric fluid that means plus R sin theta plus Y well, R sin theta plus y into rho into g, where rho is the density of the manometric fluid here. All right. Now, what is y? y is from the continuity, that means the amount of liquid which is being depressed in the reservoir has gone here. So, therefore, one can write that this y into A is equal to where A is the area of this well is equal to this r which has moved along this pipe r into a that means this equal the same volume of the liquid which has come down here has gone up there so with this we can write p a minus p b is equal to what r sin theta if we take common 1 plus what is this y is equal to r a by a that means a by a sin theta. All right, any question? It's simple mathematics at school level, but the concept is that at this point we are equating the pressure from both the limbs as we do in case of a manometer, U tube manometer. It is a modified version of an U tube manometer. All right. Now, therefore, now we see that without doing that, if we have a not a transparent material with the reservoir, only this part is transparent, we do not know this level. We only read 0 at its initial level, what is the problem statement. Then we only see the deflection, that means the movement of this liquid in the inclined tube and only read R 
and try to find out P A minus P B as only R sin theta into rho G. Then this is the actual right A and this is the measured. So, if we measure only the movement from 0 to this that initially it was 0 and we move, measure the only R reading that is the what is that reading movement of the liquid in that tube. Then this will be the reading and it is common sense just you see from this two that the difference this difference between these two will be very less provided A is very less than A. If A by A is very small than 1, sin theta is not very small in the case because it usually varies between 10, 20, 30. So, if A by A is very small, so this part is negligible, this 2 will be equal. Now, the problem is to find out the error. So, if you define error as, let this is delta P actual and this is delta P measured. Then if we define the error E, well, then E is equal to in terms of percentage delta P actual minus delta P measured divided by delta P actual, this is the percentage error 100. If you make that, that means this becomes this, can you see the delta P actual minus delta P measured. So, if you make that this will be 1 by 1 plus A by a simple algebra if you make 1 by A plus A. That means delta P actual minus delta P measured. So, therefore, numerator it will be R sin theta A by A sin theta and denominator it will be delta P actual R sin theta 1 plus A by A sin theta R sin theta will cancel and you again make the numerator 1 by dividing A by A sin theta. So, that in denominator we get that this is a simple algebra. Now, if you make the substitution here A is this 50 millimeter and this diameter is 5 millimeter small. So, this whole square these are the diameter into sin theta half. So, this comes out to be into 100 well and this will be 1.96 percent. All right, any difficulty? So, this is the value of delta P A this is the value of delta P m, this is the fluid mechanics. After that it is a class 8 level algebra. So, you can find out that delta P a minus delta P m by delta P a into 100 becomes equal to this. So, if you put the values you will get this 1.96 percent. I think that is nothing great only the concept is here. All right. Okay. Now, come to the second problem which is very interesting. Second problem. Well, second problem as you see, it is the problem related to the pressure on a curved surface. Pressure on a simple surface is very easy. If you have any problem, you just ask me. Do not make any noise in the class, you just ask me. Is there any problem? Difficulty? Please. Okay, all right. Then now you see. This problem tells like this, example 2, calculate the force F required to hold the gate in a closed position. There is a gate which is a sector of a circular arc that means it is a this is 0 0.6 meter, this is 0 0.6, this is 0 0.6. So, this has to be understood from the figure. So, it is a sector of a circular arc. This gate is 1.2 meter wide which I have forgotten to write 1.2 meter wide. That means, the gate is like this, this is plane in the perpendicular direction, this is the plane of its plane of the oil, plane of the gate. So, in this direction perpendicular direction the gate is 1.2 meter wide. That means, it is a sector of a cylindrical surface, one sector quadrant, one quadrant of a cylindrical surface, not sector I will tell one quadrant of a cylindrical surface whose radius is 0.6 meter. So, this is connected to a closed box with oil and water at pressure. How do you know? Because if you attach a manometer, this manometric fluid is mercury, this manometric fluid is mercury Hg. So, with the manometric fluid we get a deflection that means this is open to atmosphere, this part is open to atmosphere. So, that means there is a pressure in this oil and water. So, what is due to this pressure in the oil throughout? So, a pressure force is exerted on the curved gate which is a quadrant of a cylindrical surface, what is the force on this? 
So, what should be our first duty to do? Please tell me what should be our first duty to do in this problem to find out. Please tell huh? pressure at this point, top point. Let this pressure at the top point is P. We should find out the pressure at this top point. So, what to do? You write the manometric equation to find out the pressure at the top point. That means, this part is the water which will. So, if we write the manometric equation at this plane, what we get from this side P plus what we will write the pressure due to this height, this column of oil that means rho G H. What is rho density? Oil S means specific gravity that means 0.8 into 10 to the power 3 is the rho into G 9.81 rho G into h, what is h? 0.6, rho g h, all right, rho g h plus the height of the water column equivalent to 0 0.6 here, 0 0.2 here and also 0 0.6 here. That means, 0 0.6 all water column plus 0 0.2 plus again 0 0.6, you come to this point from this straight plus again 0 0.6 as it is given in the problem this deflection is 0 0.6 times the density of the water is 10 to the power 3 h rho g rho a g whatever way you write h rho into g 9.81 here h is 0 0.6 rho is this and g is this h rho g. So, from starting from this point p that is pressure p we come here equate from this side is equal to it is atmospheric pressure 0. If we want to find out the force due to the pressure above the atmosphere because this side atmospheric pressure forces is acting. So, therefore, we take atmospheric pressure as 0. So, 0 plus only this column of liquid 0 0.6 and manometric fluid is mercury whose density is rho is 13.6 10 to the power 3 h rho into g 9.81. Simply so, if you equate this equation, if you solve this equation, P will come equal to some 60, well 61.61, you check that 61.61 into 10 to the power 3 Newton per meter square. Well, that means 61.61 kilo Newton per meter square. So, this is the P. Now, next part is to find out, so this we know the P. Now, we should find out the pressure on this curved surface. Let us apply our idea that what is the horizontal force on this curved surface? Please tell what is the horizontal component of force in the curved surface? Projection. Yes, if we make a projection of this area like this, the horizontal force which is acting on this projected surface, projected plane surface is the horizontal component of the force acting on the curved surface. So, what is the horizontal? What is the force acting on the horizontal plane surface? Please tell what is the horizontal force acting on the plane surface? That is the pressure at the centroid. So, centroid is at the middle that means 0 0.3 meter from this surface. So, what is the pressure force at the 0 0.3 meters? What is the pressure intensity? That means this P plus rho G H, rho is 0 0.8 10 to the power 3 rho g into 0.3 that is the pressure at its centroid that means centroid of the center of area of the plane surface which is a plane surface whose uniform plane surface whose depth is or height is 0 0.6 meter. So, that is 0 0.3. So, at the middle the center of area this is the pressure intensity. So, then the force is acting not at the middle this is the center of area into the area. What is the area now? Area is 0 0.6 into 1.2. Very good. So, this will come out to be horizontal component 46.05 kilo Newton. 46.05 kilo Newton. Now, the next part is the vertical force. How we will find out the vertical force? Please tell me. The vertical force will be equivalent to the weight of the liquid above this curved surface. All right? Please do not talk, please tell me whether it is all right or not. 
If you do not understand, you please ask me. Uh, yes, please. So, the average force, uh, you are finding FH as the average force that is acting on the gate. Not right? average force, you have not attended the class. The, the thing is that horizontal component of the force is equal to the force acting on a plane area, which is projectional area in to that direction. So, the force acting on this plane area, consider a vertical area, is equal to the pressure at its centroid, no question of average, times its area. If you integrate the force component, you will get like that, which has been already told in the earlier classes. So, do not ask this silly question that is an average, it is the total force acting, which is the integrated force of all elemental force components on the surfaces, which finds out, which is found out to be the pressure intensity at the centroid times the area. This simple formula was derived in the class earlier. So, therefore, in any plane surface, in submerged surface, the total force acting on the plane area is equal to the pressure intensity at its centroid times its area. This has been derived. So, no question of average and all these things, all right. Okay. Now, what is the vertical component of force? The vertical component of forces act on this surface. If we find out the weight of the liquid above the curved surface, that also we derived in the earlier classes. Those who attended the earlier class, he knows that. If you have not attended, you please see the earlier lecture. Okay, so, this was derived, the vertical component is equal to the weight by magnitude weight of the surface. This is the easier way to do weight of the liquid above this surface up to the free surface. That means, we will have to consider for example, a free surface. Let us make a gap because space is not there. As if there is a free surface whose height is h, this h this h, you can see this h, if this is the height of the free surface which is extrapolated imaginary free surface that also was discussed in the earlier class, this becomes equal to this simply pressure P here by rho g. Okay? That means, this simply equal to pressure. What is this pressure? 61.61 into 10 to the power 3 divided by the rho, that means the, this we are having, we are finding out an imaginary free surface. That means, if the oil is allowed to go, that means without this chamber, this, there is a pressure that means oil free surface could have been extended to a height h from here, which is, is equal to P by rho g. That means, 0 0.8 10 to the power 3, it is very simple, 9.81. And that becomes equal to, that exactly becomes equal to 7.85 meter. That means, we get an h is equal to 7.85 meter. Now, it is very simple that we can tell now that it is the weight of this liquid vertically above the surface as we, that means weight of this part of the liquid up to the free surface. So, we will have to find out the weight of this liquid, the weight of this liquid. Okay? So, how to find out the weight of this liquid? Please tell me. How to find out the weight of this liquid? That is Yes, you can find out the volume, weight of this liquid means the volume of this liquid, volume of this parallelopiped whose area is this area, this into this and multiplied by this minus the volume of this cylindrical part. So, therefore, we can write F V is equal to rho, rho is 0 0.8 10 to the power 3, better we write rho and into the volume. What is the volume? Volume you can write that this is, is equal to 7.85 plus 0.8. That means, volume is 7.85 plus 0.6. Very good. Into minus, this side 1.2 is same, minus pi into 0.6 whole square by 4, because this is the quadrant of a circular surface, quadrant of a cylindrical surface, this side 1.2 that means this into 1.2. So, this is the volume of this liquid. 7.85 plus 7.85 plus 0.6 into 0.6. That means, this side is 0.6. Hmm? Into 0.6. Oh, 7.5. Very good. Very good. Very good. I am very happy very happy, 7.85 into 0.6, then it comes meter square, minus pi 0.6 whole square by 4, very good, okay, into 1.2, all right. 
very simple thing. So, we get the value of F B. What is F B? F B is 45.08 kilo Newton. This divided by 10 to the power 3, if you make this will be kilo Newton. Okay. Now, the question is that there is a hinge here. Let the point is O. Now, we have to find out, to find out F, the question was what is the force F required to hold the gate. So, therefore, to find out A, we will have to take the moments of the forces about O. Well, moment of all the forces. So, therefore, we must know the point of application of the forces. Now, one catch is that do not try to find out in this type of problem the point of application of this horizontal force and the vertical force. Rather, the catch is like that as because this is the cylindrical part, all the forces will be perpendicular to the element and this perpendicular always passes through the radius. That means, these are the radial lines which are always perpendicular to it. So, by which we can tell that the resultant force is a line which is perpendicular to this and passes through the origin here, this origin. So, therefore, this is another radial line because all the force components act along the radial lines. They may not be parallel, but the radial line. So, therefore, the intelligent part of this work is to assume that one radial line is the line of action for the resultant force F, F r for example, resultant pressure forces F r. Let the angle makes this resultant force with the vertical be theta, be theta. Then you take simply moment, then you take simply moment, but before that you have to find out what is the value of this theta, what is the value of this theta this theta value you can find out tan theta is equal to F h by F v. Simple a vector that F h that is the h component divided by F v and F h and F v are known and if you write, if you use this value of F h and F v, you will see this is 46.05 divided by 45.08 and this becomes is equal to 1.02 and theta is 45 point, this you check 57 degree. Now, when this theta is known, the resultant force is specified. Now, I can take moment about the hinge O to find F. So, F into points, what is this point 6 is equal to the resultant force F r, they are in the opposite direction into the perpendicular distance from the hinge point to the line of action of the resultant force, which will be equal to 0 0.6 sin theta. That means, 0 0.6 sin theta. Well, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 sin theta, 0 0.6 sin theta is this. So, this gives you F is equal to 46.01 kilo Newton. Okay. All of you have understood? All right. Okay. Now, we come to the third problem. Well, the third problem is a very simple problem. A uniform wooden cylinder has a specific gravity of 0 0.6. A uniform wooden cylinder has a specific gravity of 0 0.6. Find the ratio of diameter, quick, find the ratio of diameter to length of the cylinder, find the ratio of diameter to the length of the cylinder, so that it will just float upright in a state of neutral equilibrium in water. Probably it is one of the simplest problems in metacentric height. A uniform wooden cylinder has a specific gravity of 0 0.6, find the ratio of diameter to length of the cylinder, so that it will just float upright in a state of neutral equilibrium in water. Well, so this is a very simple problem. Oh God, this. Uh, again, a uniform wooden cylinder, consider a wooden cylinder specific gravity 0 0.6. Find the ratio of diameter to length of the cylinder, so that it will just float upright in a state of neutral equilibrium. All right, these are the pertinent points. Okay. Now, what is this? You consider a wooden cylinder and it is floating in this equilibrium. S is equal to specific gravity is 0 0.6. 
Let us consider the height of the wooden cylinder as h, that means this is this h. So, if this be y, what will be the value of y? The height of the floating part, uniform wooden cylinder, y will be how much h? It is class 9 level thing, 0.6 h, how? Because weight is balanced by the weight, where is the weight acts? Weight acts at h by 2, that means this is the center of gravity through which the W acts and this let this point is O, base point, O g is equal to 0.5 h. Okay. Now, center of buoyancy acts at y by 2, this is the center of buoyancy, this is B, A B. So, from the equilibrium consideration W is equal to A B, what is W? Pi d square let d is the diameter of the cylinder times h into density of the cylinder rho c is equal to the buoyant force, buoyant force is the weight of the h rho into g, of course g is there, g is equal to weight of the displaced volume, what is the displaced volume? Pi d square by 4 into y into rho of, sorry, into rho of water into g. Now, rho c is equal to 0.6 rho of water. So, from which we get y is equal to 0.6 h, it is very simple, class line 9 level it is done. So, when 0.6 is the specific gravity, y is 0.6 h, all right. So, therefore, B is the center of buoyancy for the uniform cylinder, it will be at the middle of this y, that means O B is equal to 0.3 h, that means this distance is 0.3 and O to G this distance is 0.5 h. Meta center will be above the center of gravity for stable equilibrium and for neutral equilibrium it is coinciding. Let us discuss in general M is above this. So, what is the value of B M? We know B M is I by V. What is the concept of I? I is the cross moment of area of the plane of flotation. That means, if I take a sectional view, I will see a circle. That is the circular cross section. And we have to take the moment of area of this circle about this axis. That is the <coughs> axis perpendicular to the plane of flotation. Okay. So, this axis we will take plane of flotation. So, about this axis, what is the moment of area I? I is equal to pi d 4 by 64. So, this is the moment of area of this circle, circular area of diameter d. Okay. So, this is an another diameter that means the moment of area of a circle about its diameter times the volume. What is this immersed volume? Please tell me pi d square by 4 into this one that means 0.6 h. So, this is, is equal to B m. So, what is m g or g m is B m minus B g, well B m minus B g. So, B m minus B g, you understand this B m minus B g. Now, B g is, what is B g? Let us write here, B g is, B g is O g minus O b. Yes, 0.6 h into pi d square by 4. Sir, y is uh, immersed volume. Uh, y is 0.6 h. So, y is 0.6 h. It is immersed volume. You are correct. It is immersed volume. That is why pi d square by 4 h, not h, 0.6 h. All right. So, B g is 0.2 h and B m is this quantity. So, therefore, next part is very simple. That is g m is equal to pi so, now you cancel it, that means d square by then it is 16 into 0 0.6, that is 9.6 into h minus 0.2 h, this is g m. This has to be greater than 0 for a stable equilibrium, for neutral equilibrium according to the problem this is 0. So, this gives d by h equals to 1.3 from this you get a value d by h is equal to 
6. All right. So, this is a very simple problem of metacentric height. Please tell me whether there is any problem. Today, I think we have completed this second chapter. Of course, the time is short, otherwise, I could have given a closer lecture today. So, next class, I will be giving a short closer lecture of what we have covered in this section and we will pass on or we will start the next section kinematics of fluid. Well, thank you.